Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Shot in the Dark. I am your host, John Ceno Evil here. Let's get right down to it. AEW Dark Elevation starts with Thunder Rosa taking on Gabby Ortiz, making her debut, winning in over a minute with the Fire Thunder Driver. Gabby Ortiz has appeared for Ring of Honor and GCW in the past. After the match, Marks Mark Sterling and Jade Cargill come out, and they go back and forth doing a promo with Rosa, hyping up their TBS tournament match that is coming up soon. Chris Statlander and Red Velvet team up to t- take on Tina San Antonio and Nikki Duke, who is making her debut here. Quick work here with Statlander pinning San Antonio with the Big Bang Theory. Antonio has appeared before on AEW. The Gun Club takes on the team of Joey Sweets, Antonio Zambrano, and Jack Tomlinson. Tomlinson is making his debut, has appeared on 205 Live as well as Monday Night Raw. And then Billy seems to get upset a little bit because Joey Sweets had Sweet Cheeks painted on the back of his tights. And uh, obviously this is Billy Gunn's gimmick and he even teases pulling down his tights to show uh, why they call him Mr. S. And the crowd chanted ass boys for Colton and Austin as well, but they do get the win here on Sweets, Antonio, and Tomlinson. Match number four was Emi Sakura defeating Notorious Mimi after a roll-up with Sur- uh, May Suruga, who was ringside, hitting Mimi over the head with the staff. Antoni- Anthony Gogo defeated Jaden Vallow, making his debut in about 30 seconds with an Olympic slam. Ortiz and Santana defeated the team of Mike Verna and Anthony Gangone, accompanied by Prince Nana of NBC fame, uh, in Ring of Honor, which is uh, unfortunate timing, obviously, with Jimmy Rave passing away. But um, it's good to see Prince Nana here uh, making his debut here in AEW. And Verna has appeared a bunch in the past, and uh, Gangone has been wrestling for about eight years or so. Ortiz pins Gangone to win this match. And the main event here was Tony Nese defeated Alex Reynolds with the running knee. Longest match of the show at about five minutes. And both of these guys are representing Long Island, so a good little main event here for that Long Island crowd. We go to Tuesday's AEW Dark from Orlando. We have Chris Statlander defeated the debuting Marina Shafir from NXT, the former um, Four Horsewoman with Ronda Rousey, I guess, um, making her debut here for AEW. Statlander does win by submission with a spider crab. Nick Camarado defeated the debuting Dean Fleming, who is uh, wearing a button-up and a tie, and then Camarado steals his tie, puts it on, and wins with the water wheel drop. We have the team of Riho and Rio. Mizunami defeated Emi Sakura and Mei Suruga. So Suruga, she has appeared in the past as part of the um, tournament they had back in Japan, uh, but it's the first time she's making uh, her debut for AEW Dark, as well as the first time wrestling stateside for AEW. It might be her first time wrestling stateside altogether. But Riho gets the pin on Suruga after the running knees. So we have a promo from Ryan Nemeth who's talking about how he's a hunk, he's a star, he's a big deal, and he talks down on his opponent for tonight, which is Chuck Taylor. By the way, I did check out Ryan Nemeth on the AEW Restricted Podcast. Definitely take a listen to it. Uh, you learn a little bit more about the man behind Ryan Nemeth and what he does, and uh, some of his work that he's been doing as far as like movies goes. He has a little short movie called Heal that I do want to check out after hearing his him talk about it, but he definitely sounds like a lot more interesting than he is presenting on TV. Jade Cargill defeated Valentina Rossi, destroys her in about a minute with the Jaded, and Helico defeated Invictus Cast by submission with the Navarro Death Row. This is Helico's first match in AEW since September. Uh, not sure what we'll be seeing Jack, Jack Evans anytime soon. Who knows with, what's going on with him in Mexico. Ty Conti defeated Heather Ron- Monroe. Monroe has not been seen in AEW since August. Conti wins easily with the DD tie. Sunny Kiss cuts a promo saying that in two weeks it'll be it will be Kiss versus Joey Janela in a no rules, no DQ, no cannot match on AEW Dark, so they're definitely going to hype that match up. Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson defeated the team of Tony Donati and Fabu Andre. Donati and Fabu are AEW Dark Originals from the first uh, set of tapings they had back in um, Florida, Daly's Place. So I'm happy to see them back. Uh, they haven't been on here since September of 2020, and uh, unfortunately they didn't play it, but Tony Donati has still my one of my favorite theme songs in AEW. If you have a chance, uh, look it up. Anderson gets the pin on Donati with the Gord Buster, and after the match, Tony Schiavone was interviewing Arn Brock and Lee Johnson. Um, but they get interrupted by Austin and Colton Gunn, who said that the, the true two uh, second generation stars who didn't get help by their daddy to come to AEW and called Brock and Lee Brock Lee as the crowd chanted ass boys to them. Chuck Taylor defeated Ryan Nemeth with an inside cradle, and after the match, the wingmen um, and Wheeler Utah all get involved. Uh, the wingmen start attacking Taylor and Utah, and Orange Cassidy comes out to stop them. I would say run out, but it's Orange Cassidy. Sean Spears defeated the debuting Josh Woods, who is the current Ring of Honor Pure Champion here. Uh, nice showing from Woods here in about four minutes. They had a match, but Spears stops him and hits the C4 for the win. So interesting here. They had the Pure Champion here and everything going on with Ring of Honor. So not sure if we'll be seeing Josh Woods uh, again in AEW, but I wouldn't mind it. He's definitely a talented performer. Joey Janela cut a promo back on Sunny Kiss, hyping up the street fight in two weeks and saying that nothing will save Kiss. 
Nala Rose defeated Zeta Zhang easily with the Beast Bomb. Arjun Singh, who has appeared on AEW Dark in the past, uh, gets his first win here, defeated Tony Vincita. So it should be interesting to see if they're going to be using Singh uh, in a more prominent role here in AEW. In the main event was 2.0 and Daniel Garcia defeated Dark Orders, Evil Uno, Alex Reynolds, and Cole Cabana. Fun 10-minute match here with Matt Lee pinning Cabana after two for the show. We go to NXT UK, where Blair Davenport defeated the Millie McKenzie with a Falcon Arrow, and a pretty good match in showing from both of them. After the match, Davenport kept attacking McKenzie, putting her into STF, while speaking Japanese and calling out Michael Satomura, who is in Japan currently, so it looks like that will be the next program for them. Noam Dar and Shaw Samuels barge into Sid Scala's office, where he said that next week, A-Kid and Nathan Fraser are having a Heritage Cup match, uh, Heritage Cup rules match, and the winner will be the number one contender to face Noam Dar. A uh, bit of an update from Rampage Brown last week, where he, uh, after his match with Ia Dragunov, he refused to get medical treatment and uh, has declined any calls from management. So they're unsure about his whereabouts and how he's doing. Zaya Brookside is in the PC and is upset that she lost to Michael Sotomora last week and said that she didn't have enough time to prepare. Jordan Devlin comes out saying that he's the longest reigning Cruiserweight champion in the history of the company, so he says that he should be next to be NXT UK champion and calls out Dragunov. Dragunov comes out, says he doesn't want to talk. Uh, if he just wants to wrestle, all, he's, all he has to do is ask for it instead of talking. And then Devlin says that he's nothing like Walter and nothing is sacred to him. So if he's given one chance, he will end Dragonov's career. Dragonov isn't scared. He says he's prepared for everything. And uh, Devlin, to kind of get under Dragonov's skin, says that he should go home and explain to his son Constantine why he grew up without a daddy. And this prompts Dragonov to go and attack him until they get separated. We have a video package for a male, a uh, different side of her, a more babyface side, where she gets real emotional and says that how she almost quit wrestling, but she didn't. And she finally made it to the WWE and her parents are really proud of her. So nice little turn from her. We get a quick Kenny Williams promo where he calls out Mark Andrews as being a scared little boy. And he's all that's left in subculture as both Flash Morgan Webster and Danny Luna are both out with injuries. Sam Gradwell defeated Shaw Samuels. Uh, Noam Dar tried to interfere here and help Samuels, but it backfired and Gradwell was able to get the win after smacking Samuels down low with the scarf. Gallus is seen in the parking lot getting ready to go attack Tioman's family. This is a cinematic style promo that was shown here. And for the NXT UK Tag Team Championships, Mustache Mountains, um, Trent Seven and Tyler Bate defeated Pretty Deadly to win the NXT UK Tag Team Championship. Fantastic 18-minute match here. Uh, Pretty Deadly tried everything. They were even copying Mustache Mountain's moves. They were using the title ba- belts. But the finish came when Tyler Bate hits the Tyler Driver and then Seven hits the Burning Hammer. And Bate ends it with the big spiral boy off the top rope for the pen to become new Tag Team Champions. Definitely my match to recommend for the week to go and check out. From NXT UK. We go to Impact Wrestling, where in before the Impact, Lady Frost, who has recently signed to Impact Wrestling, defeated Kimberly. So nice little sign in here to the knockouts division. Deanna Perrazzo and Matthew Raywolt defeated Chris Saban and Mickey James with Deanna, rolling up Mickey with some leverage uh, assistance by Raywolt. Lawrence D versus Rohit Raju ends in a no contest as Josh Alexander comes out and takes them all. Uh, but I have to admit, Lawrence D's theme music might be one of my new favorites now. Uh, check it out if you have a chance. So Alexander comes out, stops the match, calls out Jonah, but Scott Demore comes out instead and says that Jonah isn't in the building, but he does make Alexander versus Jonah add hard to kill. But Alexander doesn't want to wait, so Demore tells him to keep his emotions in check, but Alexander attacks Raj Singh, who was ringside hitting the C4. Finn Juice defeated the team of VSK and Zicky Dice of the Learning Tree. During the match, Dice does like a little magic trick where he pulls like string out of his mouth like a magician would. So yeah, pretty interesting here. Eric Young defeated Rhino in a street fight. Uh, Young told Diener and Joe Gor- Doring to stay in the back, but they end up showing up anyway. And then Heath comes out, uh, Willie Mack comes out, Rich Swan comes out, the Good Brothers come out to stop them. But this causes Young to hit Rhino with a pile driver for the pin, and the Good Brothers and Violent by Design seem to have formed some sort of partnership after this. Decay's Black Taurus, Crazy Steve, Havoc, and Rosemary defeated the Inspiration and the Influence. And before they match, they argue about what they should call themselves. Should it be the Inspirational Influence or should it be the Influential Inspiration? The Influence and the Inspiration, they bicker and argue throughout the match, resulting in Rosemary spearing Tenille for the win. We go backstage with Lady Frost, who's being interviewed about recently signing to Impact. And she is asked to be in the Ultimate X match at Hard to Kill. Well, she asked Scott Demore if she could be in it. And Scott Demore goes to Gail Kim, who is now in charge of the Knockout Division, and says that... Lady Frost is in the match along with Tasha Steeles, Rachel Ellering, Jordan Grace, and Chelsea Green, and Rosemary, which is the first ever All Knockouts Ultimate X match, which will happen at Hard to Kill. In the main event, Matt Cardona defeated W. Morrissey by disqualification. Cardona gets busted open in this match, but the match ends when Morrissey pushes off the ref and ends up being disqualified after giving him the big boot. And then after the match, he continues to attack Cardona until Chelsea Green comes out to cover Cardona. Moose comes to the ring, tells Morrissey to attack Cardona, but Morrissey is a little bit sick of Moose, so kicks him instead. And then tells Chelsea to get out the way and uh, pushes her off when she doesn't, which causes which causes Cardona to go pretty much crazy and take out Morrissey. So they are setting up that triple threat match at hard to kill between those three. 
NWA Power, Strictly Business, comes out and cuts a promo where Tom Latimer says that Nick Aldis got lucky and this feud is far from over. Father James Mitchell comes out, cuts a promo that Judeus got cheated at hard times too. Until Sal Renaro comes out, uh, looking all distraught, like he hasn't slept in days. Uh, he says he's seen the dark side. He wants to join Mitchell. Uh, and then Mitchell says no until Danny Dills comes out and pulls Renaro out. Aaron Stevens and Kratos defeated the Dirty Sexy Boys, the new tag team, DSB of JTG and Dirty Dango, the former Fandango, pretty much doing the same gimmick here. Uh, Velvet Sky on commentary is pretty much fawning over him. Stevens is a little bit of a different look here as well, wearing eye makeup, taking a little bit more dramatic approach. Uh, Stevens gets upset during the match and leaves, but Kratos alone still gets the pin and the win on JTG. Kratos cuts a promo after saying that he might not be getting along with this new Aaron Stevens, but as long as they win, he'll be happy. Judeus and Sal Renaro are in the ring, and James Mitchell says that he's going to put Renaro through a loyalty test by asking him to do some stuff, like barking like a dog, bowing down, kissing his uh, Judeus's boots, take a choke slam, which he does. And then after that, the last part of the test is he tells Renaro to drink Romanian blood, which he does. And then once Renaro drinks it, he kind of starts laughing uncontrollably. So I'm not sure what's going on here with this uh, new Renaro character. May Valentine has an interview with Melina where she says that her losing to Camille would not stop her from getting an NWA Women's title and she will get another opportunity somehow, some way. The End cut a promo saying that they're going to be entering the six-man division and they say that Jack Stane has joined them in order to do that. The NWA Women's Tag Team Championship is defended as the Hex defeats Mickey James and Kiera Hogan. Uh, Allison K gets the pin on Kiera after Hex marks the spot to retain the titles. May Valentine is trying to interview Natalia Markova backstage, and they get into a little argument, and Markova walks away. And then we kind of cut back to the ring where Kiera is mad at Mickey James and walks away from her. So it looks like this program is over between these two. Austin Idol comes out uh, with his crew, and they give Black G's a name tag and says that he is the junior executive of, of Idolmania Sports Management, and G says that. This means he can now sign and scout talent, and he announces the first signee of Idolmania will be Marche Rocket, who comes out. Billy Corgan comes out, and he says he takes full responsibility for Mike Knox being here in NWA, and it's his decision, and he stands by it, along with Matt Cardona coming in as well. Uh, this prompts Cardona and Knox to come out, and Cardona is mad that there's no music in NWA, and says that him and Trevor Murdoch go way back, but says Burdock is upset that he hasn't had an action figure in 10 years, and says that he's here with his best friend Mike Knox, and they go back two decades. Knox says that he was there to fight the Pope, but the Pope is still injured uh, from hard times too, and instead he issues an open challenge. Nobody comes out at first, and eventually Mims comes out, uh, who cuts a promo, saying, how good of a man the Pope is and how he'll accept the challenge, which Mike's not, Mike Knox does defeat him in about five minutes or so. We go to 205 Live, where Lash Legend makes her wrestling debut, defeated Amari Miller, looking pretty strong and dominant here. Andre Chase defeated Guru Raj. Uh, Chase comes out with his student, Bodie Hayward, who kind of reminds me of like a blonde Bo Dallas, basically. This is Raj's first match since July. Uh, and with the exception of Chase U Corner, the crowd was pretty much behind Guru Raj here, but Chase picks up the victory with the face buster. Solo Sokoa defeated Malik Blade with a spinning back fist as well. New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, Jonathan Gresham defeated Gabriel Kidd in an excellent match. Definitely check this match out. Will Ospreay, Jeff Cobb, and TJP of United Empire defeated Carl Fredericks, Clark Connors, and Ren Narita with Cobb pitting Fredericks after Tour of the Islands. In the main event, Tomohiro Ishii defeated Brody King. This match was hard-hitting. There were strikes, chops. Uh, Ishii's chest gets cut up at one moment, it seems like. And a great finish here with Ishii escaping out of the Gonzo Bomb, hitting the sliding lariat, and the vertical drop brain buster for the pen. Ring of Honor, this is the show right before Final Battle. By the way, uh, if you haven't checked out Final Battle, check out my report on postwrestling.com. Uh, excellent show. I liked it pretty much. A lot of surprises there. Uh, a lot of good messages from former Ring of Honor talent. So you can check out the summaries of those um, messages that they sent in as well. But as far as this show goes, we had a false count anywhere match with Sledge pinning PCO after hitting the detox DDT off the stage onto the table. Miranda Alizé defeated Chelsea Green after some ringside distraction by Angelina Love and Mandy Leone, and EC3 defeated Eli Isom by submission with the purpose. On main event, Dana Brooke defended her 24-7 title, defeated Tamina. Apollo Crews and Commander Aziz defeated Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin with Aziz pinning Benjamin after the Nigerian nail. And the WWE Network editions of the week was WXW We Love Wrestling number 24 and ICW Fear and Low 2021 part one that is it for me this week you guys can catch me here next week for another episode of shot in the dark (laughs) 